Hello everyone, welcome to my video on the Pivot Ribbon. Uh, I know a lot of folks have been really excited for this one, so I'm very, very pleased to be able to get this one out to you. Uh, before we begin the presentation, I just want to let you know that this presentation is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor. So any trades that you take using any of my ideas or my indicators are your trades and your trades alone. Um, with that, um, you know, let's, uh, let's dive into this video. Uh, I want to walk through the indicator and of course provide you some trading examples. Uh, and I'm going to do those featuring my other indicator, uh, which many of you are familiar with as well, uh, which is ATR levels. Um, and I, I think these two, uh, indicators, um, are, you know, really forming the basis of my system. Uh, and I, I'm, enjoying trading with them and, and have had some uh, good success. And it's been nice to see many of you folks, um, also, uh, you know, having some good success with these, these indicators. So, um, you know, with that, let's, uh, let's dive in and, and let's talk about the pivot ribbon. So it's going to be straightforward today. Uh, I'll go through an overview. Uh, I'm going to revisit some concepts I've talked about in other videos, uh, about EMAs that may be fundamental. So, you know, feel free to skip over those if you're you're already familiar but um, you know for those of you that are relatively new to trading hopefully they help you understand uh, you know the basis for for using something like a ribbon or ripster EMA clouds or EMAs uh, just in general uh, we'll talk through the features and uh, I'm gonna do some examples using ATR levels uh, and I'm gonna try to do examples for um, you know scalping uh, for um, uh, day trading, and then also uh, one example for a swing as, as well. Um, so we'll go through those three, um, and I hope that helps you kind of uh, understand how I use these two indicators together. All right, um, so let's talk about moving averages. Uh, a moving average is a average of previous values, and it effectively provides out a smoothed out version of the price action. Uh, and there's d various different types of moving averages that exist. Um, the two most common that you will encounter are the simple moving average, uh, which is called the SMA or MA, or you may also find it as like a DMA, which is just the daily simple moving average. Uh, and then there's the exponential moving average or EMA. And so the simple moving average uh, doesn't weight pr price action. Every single value is treated uh, equally, and they all uh, provide uh, equal representation in the um, smooth out version uh, of the, the price action. Uh, whereas the exponential moving averages, they'll weight the recent price action more. Um, and so values that are, are, are closer, uh, will give, will be given a little bit more weight in, in the, um, the moving average. Uh, and so, um, you know, there are benefits to both, um, and drawbacks to both. So the simple moving averages, uh, have the benefit that they're, t they tend to be more accurate in trend changes, but the trend change, um, confirmation typically will happen later. Whereas exponential moving averages may have more fake outs, um, but the trend change confirmation happens sooner. And so again, there's benefits and drawbacks of using each. Um, and you know, you'll find people using, um, uh, simple moving averages in place of exponential moving averages or vice versa. Some people favor, you know, one over the other. Uh, but th there's no right way to do it. Uh, you know, I prefer exponential moving averages, but I also like using the 50 simple and the 200 simple on, on daily charts or above. So, uh, you know, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. It's just whatever you feel comfortable with and, and whatever's working for you. All right. So the purpose of moving averages is to help you identify near, uh, to long-term trends. Um, and the near, uh, trends are identified by, uh, faster moving EMAs and the longer term trends are identified by slower moving EMAs. And these trends uh, are super useful in trading because they help identify potential spots where you can go long or short. So where you can enter your trade. And the, the moving averages have a sort of a nice feature when you use multiple of them together as they sort of stack up and fan out um, that indicates a stronger trend up to a point. 
eventually they'll expand so far and the price action will move so far away from them that typically it will end up coming back and retesting those EMAs or um, often it'll pivot around in EMA and, and now uh, you'll, you'll see crossovers of those EMAs, uh, crossovers of those moving averages uh, indicating a potential trend, trend change. And so, uh, you know, crossing of moving averages will indicate a weaker trend, a trend change or chop. And so that can be useful in identifying uh, where not to take a tra trade or, you know, when trying to understand uh, where a trend change may occur and that you may want to enter a trade. And so trend um, has this really nice benefit that it'll provide con conviction once you have um, a clear trend, uh, uh, you know, for your directional trade. All right, so let's talk about the pivot ribbon. Um, the pivot ribbon is made up of three EMAs, the 8, 21, and the 34. Um, and that, you know, the faster EMAs, the 8, are just smaller period. Uh, you know, it's counting only eight, 8 back versus slower EMAs like the 34, counting, you know, 34 candles back. Uh, and of course, you can configure these to, to your favorite three EMA, EMAs. There's lots of different ways of, of, of using three EMA strategies. Uh, you know, there's the 9, 21, 50, 9, 21, 55. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways you can do it. And uh, I, I came to these, um, the 8, 21, and 34, uh, because of a couple different reasons. Um, first of all, the 21 is has always been the most important EMA for me um, in trading, uh, probably because I started out really focusing on the squeeze uh, as a setup uh, for, for swing trading. And John Carter talks a lot about the 21 and, and how, you know, price action tends to, to revert to the 21. And that's a really good spot to buy uh, or, you know, buy calls or, or puts uh, when you're in a squeeze uh, that looks like it's going to fire in a particular direction. Uh, so the 21 became kind of essential to my, my trading. Um, and it's also used in so many different, you know, uh, trading styles uh, where people use, let's say, a 921 or an 821. Um, and then the eight and the 34 became more relevant to me recently. Um, you know, the eight I had, I'd used off and on, um, you know, for pullbacks, um, for adding pullbacks, uh, adding on pullbacks and day trading, but it really started to make a lot of sense when I started to investigate Ripster's EMA clouds, uh, which are absolutely amazing. Um, and a lot of the pivot ribbon is actually inspired by Ripster's EMA clouds, um, and so, you know, the, the eight is just a wonderful place to, to add and cut positions. Um, the 21 is, is, is just, you know, a perfect pivot for me. And the 34, um, I actually experimented with a 34, I experimented with a 50, uh, 55, um, 42, a whole bunch of different ones. Um, and, uh, I like the 34 because of Ripster's golden rule of trend with his 3450 cloud. Um, and I, you know, noticed that the, and I'll show you in a second, that the ribbon flipping um, combined with ATR levels in the 34 was just optimal for um, taking, um, you know, for confirming a trend change. Um, so these three really just work uh, super well with my other indicator, the ATR levels indicator. And so that's why I chose them. And that's why I retained them. Uh, but of course, you can change them to whatever you like. Um, and you can also highlight those EMAs as well. That's off by default. Um, but I know, you know, some folks like to have a more clear picture of where those EMAs are, uh, but also want to have the shading inside. So that that's uh, available as well. And the ribbon in each of the EMAs can act as uh, support and resistance. Uh, so let's walk through some of the features. Um, so these are the defaults. Of course, uh, if you change any of the values, then just, you know, swap out the values that you change for here. So the green, uh, to red, uh, portion of the ribbon, that is the faster EMAs, the eight and the 21 and the blue and the orange are the slower EMAs. That's the 21 and the 34. And then the 21, EMA sits in the middle. You can see where it divides the two halves of the ribbon, separating the two colors. Um, you know, there's a ribbon fold. This is effectively your EMA crossover where, you know, in this case, this is the eight on the bottom, the 21, the eight's crossing over the 21. You can see that there. And then eventually it crosses over the 34. 
Um, and so I like this because it ribbon, you know, the ribbon folds and then it flips over to a different set of colors. Um, and so, you know, green stacked above blue is bullish trend and red stacked uh, below orange is a bearish trend. And so what's beautiful about the, the ribbon is that it very clearly shows you, you know, what uh, based on the color, uh, if it's if it's bullish uh, or bearish uh, and these ribbon folds can really help identify when trend changes are occurring. Now, of course, there can be situations where the ribbon folds, uh, you know, frequently and the, the, uh, the ribbon stays relatively thin. And that's, you know, that's just indicating chop. Of course, this is the daily, daily chart. So, um, this is pretty rough to, to trade in if you're swing trading. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's a nice indication. Um, and you know, clear trend is also fairly well articulated, um, when you're looking at the EMAs being stacked and and um, trending in a particular direction. All right, so let's talk about a quick scalp example, and I'm using ATR levels here um, to provide my support and resistance levels intraday. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, I've got a video, a uh, couple videos on it, um, but uh, you know definitely check out the ATR levels. Uh, Indicator overview that'll give you a lot of detail into how these levels were created, uh, what they are, um, and a little bit on how I use them. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll walk through how I use these with uh, the pivot ribbon. This is a, a scalping example. You can just scalp between support and resistance. So, you know, here we have uh, the price action starts above the long trigger. Um, you know, we've got a nice trend to the upside. Uh, but then it breaks down. So you have this, you know, sideways consolidation above the trigger. That's fine, but there's no breakout. I probably would have taken, you know, something, um, you know, if it had uh, uh, broken out uh, above these levels. Uh, but this consolidation would give me pause. Um, and so I probably wouldn't take that trade. Um, you know, and then it breaks down these... Um, and breaks down the, the the ribbon you start to see the ribbon folding um, it starts to base underneath this and consolidate kind of uh, in a box range box here uh, test the 21 EMA that's the pivot uh, in the center of the ribbon uh, tests it you know rejects it and then starts to come down now I'd be fine entering in a, a quick scalp right there uh, waiting for it to come down and then exiting the scalp at this level uh, or you know taking off most of my position and then leaving runners and taking off more position um, and then exiting fully when it bounced back to the ribbon. So that's a quick scalp example on the three minute. Um, and the same thing on the upside, you know, there was a lot of chop here. You know, there was a lot of indication on Friday that we might get a bounce. Um, you know, we were monitoring that in uh, Drippy's Discord. Um, and of course we caught this play. So that was really, really cool. Great call out by Drippy. Um, and I was able to scalp this a few times. So, you know, I, um, a good way to scalp this one is you're, you know, breaking through, you've tested, uh, uh, this became resistance, you know, it stayed as resistance. You tested a, a second time, you know, tested it a third time, getting a little higher, uh, starting to move, uh, kind of in an upward trajectory. And, uh, finally we break through, you know, you could have entered the trade right here on the pullback to the, uh, to the ribbon. And then you could have exited, uh, you know, taken profit along the way, uh, entered again on pullbacks, profit along the way, you know, entered again here. This is a beautiful spot to, to enter. Uh, I believe I did enter on that one. Um, you know, you enter on a pullback to, to the close to the eight at support, um, you know, beautiful ride up for the last, um, 10 minutes or so. So lots of ways you can, you can do this, uh, but you know, uh, playing, playing these levels, uh, and scalping, uh, using the ribbon is, is a pretty efficient, um, you know, efficient, uh, uh, way to do things. All right. Let's talk about a day trade example. This is upstart, um, from Friday. Uh, I saw this one on Adam Sliver's watch list. So I ended up taking it. It was, uh, 
It was a great play. I watched it in the morning, um, started to see that it was breaking down. So this is pre-market activity kind of looked good in the beginning and then, you know, it broke down. So the same sort of thing that we saw before, this is a higher time frame. This is 10 minute, uh, you know, but same idea, same concept, the ribbon flips. So it goes from green, blue to, um, you know, non solid color, uh, or non, uh, one of these four colors to red, uh, and orange and once it breaks down from that 34 right you know once this is the 34 on the bottom of the blue once it breaks that 34 and we retest it and start falling down you know that's a pretty good indication that we've got a, a solid trend change um, so we've got a solid you know and you can see it it plays out that way uh, as we sort of consolidate pre-market before the drop so we have this consolidation, but this uh, the ribbon has turned uh, red and orange, which is sh signifying that we are in a bearish trend, which is nice. And uh, you know when pre market uh, when pre market shifts then to the open, uh, we have this big candle up. It gets rejected at the thirty four. This is why I love the thirty four so much. It gets rejected at thirty four. You'll see that often. It happens so many different charts where where you know you'll see that play out. So I'm just gonna you know gush on it for a little bit but I love the 34 um, you know it hits the 34 gets rejected and now we consolidate so these are really not and it gets rejected again at the at the put trigger or the, the short trigger and so these are really nice spots where you can start to add and in fact that's what I was doing I was adding position um, I think I got as low as 0.3 um, and that was I think a pretty sizable portion of my my position was was 0.3 um, and um, yeah so you know it's it's testing the 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 ribbon um, but it never breaks through right it's never breaking through the 21 it's never breaking through the 34 so I feel comfortable holding this position and keeping a stop you know initial stop keeping it uh, maybe just above this put trigger give myself a little room to operate uh, and then continuing to move it down to the 34 as a, as the price action continues to move down, um, you know. And this was a beautiful trade. Basically, got in on this pre mark uh, in this uh, open consolidation, uh, and then rode these uh, candles down for about a good hour or so before I took profit. Um, you know, just before it reached uh, minus one ATR. And of course, I think I could have gotten a little more, but um, ended up being a 10x play. So can't complain about that. And um, yeah, and then you can see, you know, it bounces off of minus one ATR and sort of consolidates, um, you know, it retests the 21, comes back down, goes above the 34, and it's just sort of chopping through the ribbon. So not much great there. I guess you could have scalped that if you wanted. But um, yeah, if this if you're day trading, you know, you're looking for a nice entry and then holding it for you know, an hour or two and you're good to go. So that's a day trade example. Here's Apple as a swing trade example not a trade I took but I because I didn't have these ribbons that's that's my excuse um, so we had this melt up in March you know, after the big sell-off uh, Apple's you know acting like a you know I don't know what it's acting like it's crazy um, markets selling off so um, Apple's actually been pretty strong relative uh, to everything else but yeah we had a pretty bad sell-off for the last uh, two months or so uh, so we had that big melt up in March, which was insane. 14 days of, of absolute green. Um, and then, you know, it starts to slow down and consolidate. Uh, these are daily candles. Starts to slow down and consolidate. And you can see this dolphin pattern uh, emerges on the ribbon. I've been noticing that it look, always looks like a dolphin when it's about to, when it has these big moves and it's about to then um, flip. But yeah, it kind of looks like a dolphin. Anyway, or, or swordfish. Um and it starts to break down and you start to see the ribbon flipping and you know it also breaks down the put trigger so this is an interesting place uh, to potentially think about getting in and starting to purchase some calls uh, sorry pu purchase some puts uh, right around the 21 EMA and you can see it kind of plays with that 21 EMA until it starts to uh, fall down and so you know entering maybe you would have entered a trade here uh, that would have been early um, maybe you wait for the ribbon flip. So this would be a beautiful entry right here. We'll blow the put trigger. Um, you know, it's ribbons effectively flipped. Um, 
we're retesting close to the 21 that's a really good entry point exit a little bit of the position take profit right at this uh, mid-range even that would have been intraday which is nice um, and then uh, you know continue to hold the remaining position for a couple days uh, exiting at minus one ATR on the swing levels uh, at which point it sort of bounces back and does again a EMA retest 21 34 and then back down uh, again another retest and continues to do that and you'll see you know it continues to retest the eight retest the eight um, and you know now it's gonna bounce this was off of uh, the bounce on Friday uh, and so it looks like it, we may get a potential retest of of the 21 or definitely of the eight uh, at some point in the near future so you know lots of ways to take this one um, you know lots of places to potentially add and continue to go uh, short on it um, you know multiple rejections of the ribbon um, and very clear indication of bearish um, trend and then you know of course bullish trend over here uh, and you know on this melt up there were there was a great spot to get in right as it goes up the thir over, over the 34 you know we're closing above the 34 we're closing above uh, support level we bounce off that support level you know that could be an entry a safer entry would be to wait till it's completely crossed over which you know still would have been fine two three day swing trade uh, but you know I think you could have gotten in early on this one um, you know right as it had gone over the call trigger uh, would have been a great entry as well so there's lots of ways you can do this um, but you can see the the crossovers are, are helpful uh, of course you know crossovers can be can fool you as well so uh, that's why I like using them along with uh, a system like ATR levels uh, because taking um, you know calls at support and taking puts at resistance is 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 kind of an optimal way to do things and if those happen to coincide with a trend change uh, so a ribbon fold in this case um, you know it, it's just a convenient um, visual uh, to, to understand which way to go and ultimately that is what I am trying to do with these visuals with these colors with these indicators um, is to try to make things as simple as possible for me to, to execute um, to make decisions faster um, so that I'm not second-guessing myself and so that I'm executing efficiently uh, and non emotionally um, so I hope uh, when you use these indicators um, if they're, you know, if you, if you wondering why, um, they are the way they are, <laughs> um, in many cases, it's because I'm just tr trying to simplify things for myself and, and hopefully for everybody else. So that's it. That's my pivot ribbon, uh, along with ATR levels. I hope that's helpful for everyone. Uh, I know there were requests for me to do some live trade examples. Uh, so I will try to think of a way to do that, uh, using on demand or, uh, the playback feature from trading view. And I'll get that um, going uh, for a future video. Uh, but I hope this gets you started. And uh, if you have any questions, just drop them in, in chat. Thank you.